So that's the yoga system, you see. It just brings you to higher and higher levels of what? Consciousness. It's all about consciousness. Desires come from consciousness, you see. Activities come from desires, which all originates with our consciousness. On what level is our consciousness? So the yoga system is purifying our consciousness. We're conscious of things, but what is our attitude toward that thing? Where it's some activity or what? You see, it's our attitude toward life that changes. You know, before our attitude was this, but as I become purified, I have a different attitude toward the same thing. And I realize more and more that even though the external is so amazing in certain situations and I can do these things, if I spend all my time and energy there, I'm missing what I really need. See, I mean, we've only got so much time and we've only got so much energy. So I have to start prioritizing. Where am I going to put my time and my energy? What's the most valuable for me? Mm -hmm. The spirit soul. And that's when I start really making good choices in life. I have knowledge from this whole philosophy. See, I have really an educated outlook on things, and I can make good choices. We have to make choices, especially in the human form of life. When the soul reaches the human form of life, it is a life that is going to demand you make choices. We have to. Every day we have to make a choice to get up. <laughs> I mean, some people make the choice, I'm not getting up today. You know? But that's a choice too. So we have to make a decision right away some, in the beginning of the day. Will I get up or not? And when I get up, I have to make a choice. What am I going to do now? See? And it just continues. And then we come to the end of the day, I'm, I have to make a choice. Am I going to go to bed now? Am I going to go to bed later? And on and on. It, it's just the way it is. So we can't avoid making choices, but we can make good choices with good information, good understanding. And that begins with, I'm spirit soul. I need to make good choices for my spiritual well-being. See, so the yoga teaching is giving us the information we need. You know, it's, it's information about what food to eat, what is the best diet for the soul who is located in the human body. See, it gives that information. It gives what is the best way to live the day, the 24-hour day. What is the best time to get up? And when I get up, what is the best activity to engage in? Exercises, what are the best exercises? It gives you all information about just everyday life, you see. And it's all based around what is best for me, the spirit soul, see. And it gives us information of how to see things. If I don't see it that way now, I know that's how I should see it, you see. And gradually, I start seeing it that way too. Before I didn't, no, I, I just couldn't relate to what you were talking about. But now, mm -hmm, I understand, I see, see. Because now my vision has changed, my perspective has changed, my attitude, everything has changed. And one constant in the material world is change. You cannot avoid change in the material world. The body's changing all the time. Every, every cell in the body is changing. You got a new complete kit every five years. See? Right now, every day, the body's changing. See? All the things around us are changing. I come, you know, back to a place I was at a year ago, and things have changed. They're different. You see? And it's always going to be like that because the material world is in a constant state of flux. And we, the eternal spirit soul, are changeless. See, so really we want stability, but we're located in a constantly changing world. And that presents a lot of conflict as well, you see. We're trying to hang on to whatever it is that we want to hang on to, but we can't. Things change. You see, it used to be like that. It's not anymore. See? The body's changing. The mind's changing. The people around us are changing, and so on. Mm -hmm. So what we have to learn to do, number one, is accept this fact. Okay, this is going to change. No big deal. But we get attached to this and this and this, and we're, it's like somebody's ripping it from our hand. I don't want to change. 
but we do, you see. But when we're solid inside, when we're on this stable platform, the external changes don't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, you guys are in Norway. The weather changes all the time, right? <laughs> I mean, that's a given. I've been here enough. I've been coming here for, what, 18, 19 years now. You know, and, you know, yeah. But you have a saying, don't you? There's no such thing as bad weather. It's just bad clothes. What does that mean? You just wear good stuff, and you don't worry about the rain today and, the, you know, the snow tomorrow and the ice, you know, all oh, snow great, and then two days later it rains and, you know, just turns it all into ice, and you're skating around, you know, trying not to break your leg. and You know, but it's okay, you know. Just good clothes, good shoes. <laughs> you adapted to the situation. That's the point. See, so we adapt to the changing world. There's no stability here, but there is stability on the spiritual platform, you see. And so that's what we want to do. We want to go to that higher level of real internal stability where I, the spirit soul, am stabilized in my relationship with the supreme, the whole spiritual system, the yoga system. I'm a functioning part of that system. My life is based on those teachings, and now my life's stable. See, so when the inevitable comes, you know, let's say the, the, the final, you know, exam, so to speak, death, you know, that's okay too, because that's just another change, you know. Bhagavad Gita, you know, which has been described as the supreme book of yoga, one of the main scriptures in the yoga philosophy, in there is stated very clearly, as the soul continually passes in this body, from boyhood to youth to old age, in the same way the soul enters into another body at the time of death. That's inevitable, see? But then it states, but the self-realized soul is not bewildered by such a change. Self-realized soul is not bewildered. Everyone else is very bewildered by this change. So self-realization is the goal of the human life. It's the purpose of the human life. Mm -hmm. We always are thinking, what should I do with my life? What's the purpose of life? See? 